Skyborn takes place in the distant future, in a misty wilderness where a boy named Blue lives with his father Gideon. Gideon dreams of taking his son to a world above the clouds in a homemade flying machine. Their first attempts end in failure, and a dangerous failure at that. No, brother! Turn right! The short film is the work of British film students Jamie Stone and Len Rowles. Its central theme is about values such as faith and family. And then if I broke it, it would be a... The father has this, this dream, but the son uh, doesn't really buy into it anymore. He doesn't believe that there's anything else apart from what they know on the ground. Um, and that difference in what they believe causes problems with their relationship. Jamie Stone had the idea for Skyborn three years ago. He wrote the script and storyboarded every scene himself. We wanted it to feel very much like we were in the past, even though it's set in the future, um, which informed a lot of stylistic decisions. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a world so far in the future that it shouldn't feel like, uh, you know, Mad Max or Star Trek or anything like that. It should, it, it, I wanted it to feel more like being in a 16th century Scottish croft. The shooting last year was very demanding. Stone had a budget of just 15,000 euros and a crew of only students. He also had to have special effects done involving sophisticated technology and even stunt scenes. The team were fantastic, they were really enthusiastic. I mean, we had everybody working for free, but people were really eager to, you know, or at least it seemed that way, they were really eager to, to turn up in the morning and see what we were gonna do the next day because pretty much every day we were doing something, something cool. The team had just eight days to get everything in the can. Jamie Stone directed the entire production. Skyborn is his biggest project to date. The facilities were provided by the National Film and Television School in Beaconsfield near London. Skyborn was Jamie Stone's and Len Rouse's graduation project. They were raised eyebrows when we told them we wanted to make a film fully in fog, but they really wanted us to try and explore how we could do it. Um, so they were there every step of the way, by no means hand-holding, but making good suggestions and, you know, sort of really making you question what you're doing. Four months of preparation took place before this studio at the school was converted into a film set. Producer Len Rowles had to be very creative in finding solutions. In the film, you'll see these wides that look like they're really huge, but actually they're using all of the space um, that we had available at that point. They cover the room's walls in white sheets. The fog machines ran non-stop. They helped set the scene for the film's post-apocalyptic wasteland. The whole of production was a major challenge. I mean, um, just, the, just the practicalities involved of, of matching matching miniatures to real life, shooting the entire thing in, in fog. The film crew shot some of the scenes with a model flying machine. It was a miniature version of the life-size machine and even had moving parts. The shots of the miniature and the life-sized flying machines had to be cut together seamlessly. I think that that also made it fun and I think a lot of a lot of people kind of got behind it because it was an, an ambitious project and it was unusual and, and actually we got a lot of support for trying something different and trying something big. Um, so it, in a way, thinking big, I think, worked in our favour in the long run. It worked well enough to get the film about Blue, Gideon and The Flying Machine nominated for one of this year's student Oscars. It's an enormous privilege for us to be nominated for a Student Academy Award because the other candidates are all fantastic. It's very on in, um, early on in our careers and the film's career. We only finished the film in February and this is the first thing it's gone on to do. So it's really, it sort of means that it's connecting with audiences and that's a really good sign for us. Len Rowles and Jamie Stone are already planning their next production, a feature-length version of Skyborn. Thank you.